This is a talk that I gave at the uh, Public Interest Environmental Law Conference, which is held in early March every year at the University of Oregon. Attendees of the talk wanted my slides, so I just thought I'd make a <coughs> small video of the presentation, which was 10 minutes long. This video will come in two parts then. Now, mostly this conference involves a bunch of lunatic lawyers talking about various things related to tax incentives or disincentives and the like. So I'm not quite sure why I, the physicist, was part of this, but what the hell, I was there and I, this is what I said. And I wanted to impress upon the audience what the finite nature of the Earth actually looks like in relation to this issue of running out of oil and subsequent consequences. But first, we need to briefly define what I mean as business as usual and basically, my definition of business as usual is that it's maintained because it's just too damn hard not to do it. And I think that's why we're essentially paralyzed and stuck in this fossil fuel addiction, inability to ramp up deployment of renewable energy technologies at the scale required, and the like. Overcoming the legacy world, which is the world that all of us unfortunately live in, is really quite difficult. One of the things I always do in these kinds of presentation is to try and debunk two widespread myths that are out there. The first is this idea that the waveform in which we're going to exhaust our oil supply is this canonical peak oil, in which case there is an exponential ramp up, we're suddenly at this peak, and then holy crap, we fall off the peak and the world ends. So this is nuts. This is not going to happen. Uh, we're go instead, this peak is going to be smoothed out by worldwide refining limitations, which I'm going to get to. The other perpetual myth is that most, if not all, of our imported oil comes from the Middle East. And, of course, that means all our foreign policy is now shaped on the necessity of getting most of our imported oil from the Middle East. This has never been true, but... The data never seem to reach the public, and the public still labors under this strong misunderstanding. Here's the most recent data from November of 2013. Yes, we import 75% of total U.S. oil use. In other words, only 25% of it comes from domestic sources. That's not very good. But of that 75%, it's dominated by Canada, uh, Mexico, and Venezuela. And the only significant long-term Middle East contribution has come from Saudi Arabia. Places like Iraq and Kuwait are a very minor component of our total oil portfolio, less than 1%. So you can all drive less than 1% if you want to eliminate that market. Now, this is an animated um, sequence showing the overall history of global oil usage going back to 1950. So we start off in this period where we have this big exponential ramp up. This is when the fossil fuel global dependence starts. It's an extraordinary rate. It doubles uh, every eight years. If this were to have continued, we would have ran out of conventional oil a long time ago. The next period goes from about 1970 to the mid-80s. And you can see there's an event in here, some kind of instability. We don't really care what it is. We just care that at the end of this period, here, production was the same at the beginning of this period for about 55 million barrels a day. So if you were to predict oil usage in, say, the year 2000, you'd extrapolate this blue curve off this screen, and now you'd extrapolate this to a constant. Much different outlook. And then we get into this highly linear regime where the amount of oil on the world market is increasing at the rate of about 1.5 million barrels per day. The y-axis here is millions of barrels per day of consumption or production. They're the same thing. And this allowed for robust future speculations in which if you wanted to invest in oil, you could, in, say, 1988, you could confidently predict how much oil is going to be on the market say in the year 2000, and make a lot of money. And this is exactly what happened. So I'm going to reveal the important last final panel here in part two.